So hey everybody, it's Lorna here at the studio and we did a watercolour feather uh, Zoom class yesterday. The internet connection wasn't too fabulous so I've decided to quickly record what we did yesterday in quick time and um, just have a quick chat about um, the supplies that we used yesterday. So um, I'm just sitting at the back of my studio at one of my tables and I am uh, going to be using uh, these sort of small uh, watercolour postcard um, pads to actually do the feathers. Um, so we've got those. You can use any kind of watercolour paper, but 300 GSM is probably the, what I would recommend and what I would use. Um, the brushes that we're going to be using today are just three brushes. Um, so I'd use the um, uh, Neef Taclon Script, which is a very skinny... Um, brush. Um, you might see these as um, uh, uh, a different type of name in the art shops, but um, this one is a Neef 990 Taclon script. Uh, the other one that I use a lot is my everyday um, round mop brush. So this is the Windsor & Newton mop brush and you can see it's got a really beautiful barrel up through the center of where the brush bristles are and it's got a really fine tip point. Um, when you actually see a lot of these brushes in the art shops, this is sort of what they look like when they're dry. But when you actually get them and grab a mason jar, you can see how it's quite fluffy there on the top at the moment. When you put it into the jar and you sort of get the excess off, they should form a really beautifully um, fine tip. And that's what you're looking for in a good brush. And it's very versatile and you can use this one brush for mostly every kind of thing that you need to be working with for this type of exercise. Um, the other brush that I've got is just an old sable, it's a sable, um, number 12. It's a fuzzy sort of dry um, older brush and I actually use that to um, uh, flick out with the feathers on the bottom of the tail part of the actual feathers themselves. So we're going to create something like this today. Um, with just one colour, I might drip in, drop in another colour, um, we'll just see how, how we go. Uh, the paints that I'm actually using, uh, this is dried up from yesterday, but it's just a 75 cent um, white plate from Kmart. So um, run down to Kmart and um, you can sort of uh, use these sort of 75 cent plates if you haven't got an expensive mixing palette, because I know a lot of you are trying to sort of save a bit of money, which is awesome especially at the moment because we don't know what's going on and then the actual pigments that I use um, normally I like to work big so I have um, this type of uh, palette and I use tubed um, pigment uh, which comes like this this is the Daniel Smith um, these are the sort of the slightly larger 15 mil um, tubes but across all brands, you can normally get the sort of larger tube and the smaller tubes. So that's Windsor Newton, that's Daniel Smith. Um, and then if you want to save a bit of money again, because you're just starting out with watercolour, um, Officeworks have a really good set of um, basics. Um, that's a 12 pack set and I think they're about $19. And then you can double up and get the, well, 18 and they're about 25 to 30 dollars and um, they're, they're quite a good um, all-round set and I see a lot of artists actually using the Reeves um, watercolour um, packs so Officeworks we're running low in stock of those so you might want to jump in quick or order them online. All of my palettes that I have uh, I normally do a swatch sheet um, to every single palette so on this tray the yellow uh, on the tray up, up here will actually start on my chart and actually go all the way around the page. So that's just something for me so that I know what colour is actually in the palette. Uh, the beauty about watercolour is that if you've been um, either working on a palette or working on a plate and you are working for one day and then you want to come back to that piece of work the next day, all you need to do is get your brush and basically um, get it into the water and reactivate it and that's your palette that you were working on the day before so quite a bit different from um, working with acrylics which goes off and you waste a lot of paint with watercolor it's um, it's much easier to actually um, work small and work smart uh, the other kind of palette that you can use if you do not have tubed palettes work with what you've got 
So these are the, um, the little square sort of reservoir palettes. These are pens and these are the Daniel Smith again. Um, that's the actual um, primary set that I've got there. Um, but you can get those in lots of different brands. So um, it doesn't really matter if you've only got one or two colors, that's perfectly fine. So um, what I'm gonna do now is pause this section of the video and reset so that we're facing down looking onto my table and I'll, um, I'll be back in just a tick. Okay, catch you in a minute. Okay, so um, I've just reset my um, uh, workbench. I'm sitting at the table and I've got my iPhone hooked up on a stand beside me. So what we're gonna do is go through the technique with just monotone color. So I'm using the Daniel Smith uh, Indigo. Um, and the Indigo, as you can see from my color swatch, if you can pick it out on the, on the screen, sheet here is um, this one so depending on how much pigment to water ratio you apply you can obviously get uh, very in depth of the pigment um, which is really um, cool for sort of layering up and um, and showing sort of um, a really nice monotone effect so these two are just done with that one color so I'm just going to put those to the side um, and then I'm going to show you a couple more that we've um, done as well so um, we're going to be using a combination of uh, probably a flat wash um, which is here and then there's some wet and wet techniques you get by dropping uh, wet pigment into already um, wet pigment that's actually on a layer already. Um, we won't be doing a graded wash today, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, uh, and the, these are some of the ones that have had a couple of layers um, and then I've embellished them at the end with some, um, some white and some markings. And then this is a, a two-tone green and sort of um, uh, a bit of turquoise one that was done with two colours on the brush at once on the first layer. And then I've gone in with a, a Micron pen, which is a waterproof fine liner. I'll just grab one. So that's sort of one of the brands you can use. Um, and then that's another one that you can use, a Stedler, Artline, anything that's a waterproof one. And then you can go in and you can use um, gel pens as well. So that one there has actually got a combination of gel pen and paint. Um, and then this one's uh, got some um, gold um, on that one as well, which is quite, quite cool. And then <clears throat> depending on the brush that you've got, uh, you'll get some really nice techniques at the bottom of the feathers, depending on, now most of this was done with the, the one brush in the in one layer. And then what I've done is I've dragged the, um, um, I mean, I know that this is called a Taclon script, but I call it a rigor brush. And I would be grabbing wet, juicy pigment and just flicking flicking up and out with the actual rigor with, um, I'm pulling sort of wet pigment out and, and down and up. And that's how you get that technique. So um, the first thing that we're going to do on a piece of um, blank paper is get in the ratchet um, that runs up the middle of the feather with one sweep and it's a one singular sweeping motion and it's quite fast and then you let that sit and the pigment that we're putting up on that one stroke line it's not too watery a mix so the mixes that we will be doing will be a mix between sort of a wasabi and a soya sauce mix and that's probably the easiest way to describe it so one's a much thinner watery wash and then um the the single stroke that goes up the middle is more of a sort of um a bit of a thicker um sweeping stroke with a little bit of thicker paint but as you practice this you'll you'll get to know how it works okay um and there's a few different sort of um feathers going on there and some color and things as well so okay let's get started so i've got my plate and I've got my, um, my, my mop brush, which is my, it's actually made with squirrel. And I'm just going to um, juice up my, my pigment. If I don't feel that I've got enough, I'm just going to go into my palette over there and actually drop some deeper pigment on the side of the plate. And I'm just going to pick up some more water and drop some water in there as well. So you can see that um, there's there's a, a bit of water and a bit of movement going on. So I'm just reactivating this and 
getting my paint ready to actually lay down color. I'll just leave that to the side and I'll get my rigger ready. And I just need to find my little postcards. So I've got the Fabriano and I've got the uh, Winslow Aquarel and both of these are 300 GSM um, cold pressed. So they're not smooth. Okay, so I'm just gonna place that there so that you guys can see it, which should be okay. I've gotta be careful because I'm at a little bit of an angle here. And I'm just gonna get my script rigger brush and I've loaded it up with a bit of pigment and I'm going to do one sweeping move, movement and there wasn't enough on that one, so I'm gonna go again. And I don't really mind if I've missed it. It's because we haven't warmed up. And then we're gonna basically start with the tip of the brush up here, press down. And as you come into the bottom of the ratchet, you're lifting up, okay? And you'll see where, uh, and this is this is dry. So um, this is um, wet on dry technique. So we've, we've not wetted the paper at all. Um, all we've got on there is the, um, is the single line for the ratchet. And then I'm just dropping a little bit of pigment with my tip down the bottom. And then I'm going to um, try and keep it flat. I'm actually going to use the tip of my brush to, um, Pull pigment at the bottom of this feather. Sort of go up a wee bit because the, the the first wash is actually nearly nearly dry already. You can see that it's dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the pigment on there. I'm going to go back and grab the rigger, the script brush, and I'm going to pull wet pigment before it dries up and out the way and down the way. Okay. And you can do as much or as little on that. And always remember that watercolor does dry quite a bit lighter. So this will um, dry lighter than what it is at the moment. Okay. So that's the first one. So have a have a crack at that. Um, I'll just do another quick demo. I'll move this one to the side and grab the other little notepad so we don't um, trash that one. Let's see if we can get another one going. So same technique again. I start from the bottom and I angle my paper and I've got my elbow down and, I've, and I'm, I'm being confident and I am one sweeping movement and that's it done, okay? And then I'm going back in with my with my brush. Just get a bit more water, not too much. And I'm going to go. Oh, I've got a hair on the end of that one. And I'm going to start at the top, press down, and then lift as you come to the bottom. And there's not quite enough pigment in that one, so I'm actually just going to go in and go again because you can. Okay, and that's another one done. So then while I've still got pigment on this brush, I'm going to drop more in because these brushes hold a lot of um, pigment and water, which is amazing. I love these brushes. And I'm gonna dry it off a little bit and I've got paper towel on the, on the right hand side of me where my um, tools are. And I'm going to, with the tip, and I'm, I'm upright at the moment with my brush, I'm sort of angling it down and up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that um so the fuzzy dry brush this is a dry sort of old brush I'm going to grab this and very gently in a sweeping movement pull the feathers can you see and then if I want to I can go back in and just drop pigment back in while it's still wet and it will sort of blend back in down the bottom if I want to go a little bit darker. I could actually still go in while it's still a little bit damp at the top and sort of do a couple of you know, imaginary designs into the actual top of the feather area. I could sort of do a couple of 
marks there or I could just leave it as it as it is and I can just leave that that to dry okay so um, that's another one done um, this one on on this side this is dry already and you can see how much lighter that's dried I'll just show you the both of them excuse me so can you see how when it's it's quite wet um, it does look a lot darker and and when as it dries it actually lightens up quite a lot so just just don't be afraid to actually get nice juicy pigment and um and lay it in so yeah i hope that helps um um i shall catch in and check in with you guys in the next week um, i'm going to be in the studio recording a bit of video but if you want to subscribe to the newsletter jump on to um levyartgallery.com.au slash workshops and there is a uh, form on the right hand side of that page where you can actually subscribe to our newsletter or contact us and we'll add you to the mailing list and we will be actually doing a lot more online work in the next um couple of months by the look of things so yeah i hope that helps and um have fun and um i shall catch you later bye